We will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. IT's happening. Navy SEAL has had enough of Rhino McCain. As we all know, nearly every decision that Trump makes regarding the Navy SEAL unit or any other military operation is considered dangerous by the bragging liberals who, by the way, have been making similar calls at the time when Barack Obama was the president of the U.S. As for our heroes, the troopers, we all know that their lives are at stake for the mission and that if they lost their lives, it would be the hardest thing that their family has to deal with. But, we all know that our lives are far less important to the good mission that we have to accomplish. Sadly, not long ago, we lost another hero. Navy SEAL William Ryan Owens lost his life in such a situation. America will never forget this hero's name. As for the liberals, this is just another chance to score political points. Senator John McCain tried to score some political points by rock or quarterbacking the circumstances and calling the mission a disappointment essentially in the light of the fact that he doesn't care about our president, nor the family of the fallen hero. According to the reports, Shortly after President Trump was sworn into office, a special operations raid first planned under the Obama administration was launched against Al-Qaeda base in Yemen to gather intelligence. Unfortunately, this resulted in a number of civilians being killed, the loss of an American military aircraft and the death of a Navy SEAL named Chief Petty Officer William Ryan Owens. Previous Navy SEAL Carl Higby showed up on CNN and requested that McCain apologize to the group of the fallen Navy SEAL for scrutinizing the mission for political reasons, I think John McCain does owe an apology to the Owens family. I think it was dishonorable of him, too. He called it an unsuccessful mission because of a plane crash? This guy who crashed an enormous amount of planes during training. Look, these things happen. And it's not an unsuccessful mission just simply because John McCain does not like Trump. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Seconds ago. Liberal Democrat leader shocks the entire country. The liberals have double standards for a lot of things. For example, they say that they accept people of all races and backgrounds, but that is not the case. Liberals from around the world regularly attack people who to do not agree with them. We've seen this very recently in the United States. Well, it seems one liberal has had enough. This leader of a political party has stepped down, admitting his people are not as open-minded as they claim to be. From Daily Caller, Tim Farron resigned as leader of the U.K.'s Liberal Democrat Party Wednesday, saying it was impossible to both follow Christ and lead his political party. The consequences of the focus on my faith is that I have found myself torn between living as a faithful Christian and serving as a political leader, Farron said. Farron clarified that he did not believe in imposing his Christian views on the public and that, as a liberal to his fingertips, he strives to protect the liberties of those who believe differently than he does. Despite the friction, Farron also said his own beliefs have not been tolerated. Even so, I seem to be the subject of suspicion because of what I believe and who my faith is in," Farron said. In which case, we are kidding ourselves if we think we yet live in a tolerant, liberal society. That's why I have chosen to step down as leader of the Liberal Democrats. It's important to note what Farron said. As a Christian, he was forced by his Liberal Party to deny parts of his faith. Yet the party itself was not tolerant of his religion and lifestyle. Liberals demanded that he accept homosexuality, something regarded as sinful by many Christians. He struggled with this, trying to observe his faith and still stay politically correct. That same Liberal Party refused to accept Farron's faith in Christ. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Denzel Washington lets loose and accuses Obama on TV. In Hollywood or so-called the liberal world, Barack Obama remains admired by the masses. That is what got a reporter confused lately as he asked Hollywood A-lister Denzel Washington a question regarding the president and got a pretty shocking answer. As conservative Tribune informed, soon after the last presidential election, a liberal journalist saw Washington and asked him who he gave his vote to. Normally, he was expecting the star to give him the Democrat, anti-Trump answer. 
but something else happened. Just wondering who you wound up supporting in the election and why? Journalist Nicholas Ballacy demanded on the red carpet for Washington's movie Fences. Washington tried to divert the question back to the movie, but when Ballacy continued to press him, he silenced him with a blunt answer. None of your business. He stated emphatically. After fumbling a bit, Ballacy pressed on and asked Washington about Obama specifically. Right now, under President Obama, over the last eight years, in your mind, have race relations improved under his leadership? He asked. Most actors would have taken this opportunity to lavish Obama with praise, but not Washington. Race relationships have to do with race relationships, Dash answered Washington, letting the reporter know that in high opinion, Obama has nothing to do with race relationships. You're white, or whatever you are, and I'm black, or whatever I am, we're standing here talking now. That's how we get things done. You can't legislate love. The President of the United States can't legislate us into liking each other. We have to step forward and ask questions about each other and engage. There's no law that says, oh because I'm President, you all gotta get along now. So it's up to us. He went on explaining. We would be happy to hear your thoughts and predict. IT's happening. Sheriff Clark denied an offer from Trump then he gave him something way better. Milwaukee Sheriff David Clark had chosen to deny the seat in the Department of Homeland Security as Assistant Secretary in the Office of Public Engagement. According to Fox News, he was planned to begin working by the end of May, but he declared this Friday that he will reject the job. Here is a video content of when the sheriff primary accepted the position. And here is some more. Craig Peterson, his representative revealed, Sheriff Clark is 100% committed to the success of President Trump, and believes his skills could be better utilized to promote the president's agenda in a more aggressive role. It is not clear what that more aggressive role might be, however, Peterson also said that Trump met with the sheriff last week, to discuss other roles he might take, that would be of benefit to the Trump administration and to the country. Sheriff Clark was one of the biggest supporters of Donald Trump's campaign prior the presidential election. Also, the rightist started liking and supporting him a lot, especially due to his points of view on crime. Lately, Sheriff Clark's jail was under investigation, as it was reported that a mentally ill man died of dehydration while being in solitary confinement in the jail. Most likely, there will be charges filed against some people working in the jail, but as for now, there is no information on whether Sheriff Clark will be charged or not. H slash T Fox News Just now. Two Republican senators let America and their party down, this is unacceptable. Soon after the information spread around that Vice President Mike Pence's tie-breaking vote had provided states with the rights to withhold taxpayer money from Planned Parenthood, the question that arises is, why was a tie-breaking vote necessary at all? Especially as the Republicans have the majority in the Senate. The reason behind that is pretty shocking, Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski, both of them Republican senators, thought that life of a child is not worth a vote. From Independent Journal Review, the Republican-controlled Senate voted on Thursday to roll back an Obama administration regulation and allow states to withhold funds from Planned Parenthood. After Senators Susan Collins, R. Me, and Lisa Murkowski, R. Ak, joined the Democrats and voted against the bill, Vice President Mike Pence cast the tiebreaker, his second of the day, Collins and Murkowski earlier voted against beginning debate on the measure. The regulation, issued by the Department of Health and Human Services in December 2016, prohibited states from withholding Title X funds from specific types of providers based on reasons unrelated to their ability to provide services in an effective manner. It went into effect two days before Obama left office. Fortunately, things did not get out of control and the officials succeeded in winning over the terrible Obama legacy, letting every U.S. citizen to greatly pursue life, freedom, and fulfillment. It was my honor to break tie vote and Senate overturning last-minute Obama rule and restoring state control over Title X family planning funds," wrote Mike Pence on his Twitter profile.
the two senators are a shame for all Republicans, women, and the USA as a whole. Letting their nation and party in this was is simply unforgivable. We would be happy to hear your thoughts and predict. Massive news top Democrat can lose something this valuable. Recent reports prove that he is. The golden rule about any conflict is that if you are going to start a war, make sure you hold your hands properly. That said, there are those politicians who have made a career out of lying and who seem to get away with it, or at least seem not to suffer too much for spreading falsehoods. The Clintons come to mind, but they have an enormous amount of company. Yet even such confirmed egomaniacs as Bill and Hillary can only push things so far. After all, she ran two campaigns for president and lost both times, once in the primaries to Obama, and once in the general election to Trump. Bill got impeached and only stayed in office by a partisan vote in the Senate. Clearly, their legendary abilities to lie didn't save the day for them in these cases. And it looks like another pompous, leftist politician has just gotten caught in a lie, and more. John Lewis is a congressman from Georgia who hails from the far left. He made news most recently with his derogatory comments about Donald Trump, when asked by Meet the Press host Chuck Todd if he would cooperate with Donald Trump moving forward, Lewis responded, It's going to be very difficult. I don't see this president-elect as a legitimate president. I think the Russians participated in helping this man get elected. And they helped destroy the candidacy of Hillary Clinton. However, Mr. Lewis, in shooting off his mouth, has brought two facts into focus. First, Lewis was revealed to be a liar, as his claim that Trump's would be the first inauguration for him to miss was a fabrication. Turns out, the leftist congressman also skipped the inauguration of George W. Bush, and for the very same reason. Then it was revealed that he has not paid his fair share, which is a liberal mantra if there ever was one. In violations of this sacred piece of liberal dogma we find that, records show that Democratic Rep. John Lewis, who attacked the legitimacy of Donald Trump's presidency, has failed to pay taxes on his $1 million townhouse in Washington, D.C. Source, the District of Columbia Office of Tax and Revenue, via Got News, Perfect. The man casting stones at Donald Trump turns out to be a liar and a tax cheat. Of course, mindless leftist supporters will find a way to ignore these two inconvenient facts or explain them away. But you know the truth, and anyone willing to take a look can know the truth. Lewis is one big liberal liar and that is a fact. What do you think of this? Share your